What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today I want to talk about the banking industry, and this is going to be a very important video. So if you're watching this right now and you're thinking, I don't need to know anything about the banking industry, you need to pay attention because we all have money in banks and we need to know what's going on when it comes to the banking industry. I tend to look at the banking industry as an indicator of what's to come when it comes to our economy. Are we falling into a deep recession? So I'm going to show you a few clips of what's going on in the banking industry and why you should be concerned about your money and banks, the future of banks. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all by clicking all you'll get notified anytime we post a video we do daily videos here so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all you should be getting updated every day okay so i want to show you this clip first and now this was one year ago about about 10 months ago that they posted this this uh, clip and it's interesting because they're talking about the the banking industry and how banks are closing so let's go ahead and play that first seven on your side's michael finney is here with a growing development this is happening in surprising numbers we all sort of take our local bank for granted until it's gone yeah i've got to tell you you look at all the ones that have closed maybe temporarily during this pandemic but the bottom line is it may be closing for good so here's a question how long will your neighborhood bank branch be there we're using them less often. So now banks are beginning to rethink the whole idea of branches. The temporary closure of this Wells Fargo Bank in Oakland caught customers by surprise. I'm super annoyed and super ir irritated. This is a, a huge inconvenience and I wish something could be done about it. Last year, Wells Fargo closed 221 branches. That's more than any other bank. This branch did reopen, but is no longer open on Saturdays. Bank of America shut down this branch in Brisbane, leaving the small city south of San Francisco without any bank. Chase turned off the lights at this branch in South San Francisco early in the pandemic. It reopened, offering a different set of services. Beth Mills of the Western Bankers Association says that's a trend seen at other banks, too. It's a little bit different where it's not where people are going to deposit checks and take money out, but rather go for financial services. A report from Global Market Intelligence found banks at a record by closing nearly 4,000 branches last year and opened just 1,000 new ones. That's a net loss of 2,927 branches. James Wilcox is with the Haas Graduate School of Business at UC Berkeley. Banks have been closing branches on balance for at least a dozen years. The pandemic certainly accelerated the pace of closures, but increased use of mobile apps coupled with competition from online banks such as Ally and payment systems like PayPal certainly played a role. If we can do more and more of our financial transactions faster, whenever we want to do them, conveniently, cheaper, um, it makes the whole industry uh, more efficient. The Western Bankers Association says those most resistant to change are senior citizens. But banks will take the time to show them how it's done. Some of it may be just a, a learning curve that they're not quite sure how to go about doing that. So we're there to help them do that as well. The Bankers Association tells us that on average there's a bank every half mile. Uh, but So they don't really see branches going away completely, but the services you find in each branch is going to be different in the future. Okay, so that was 10 months ago that that video was posted, and we're starting to see even more banks closing. And banking industry right now, they're, they're struggling, and they're struggling because the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, and banks, they're, they're, their cash cow is loaning out money. And if the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, less people are out there looking for loans. And because less people are out there looking for loans, banks are suffering. And so what they're looking at now is closing banks or they're looking at alternative ways to to bank. So we're hearing about teller list tellers. So you go into a bank and there's no one working in the bank. It's fully automated. They'll have ATM machines and then they'll have these uh, other machines that have a teller that's basically it's a video call. And so that's we're seeing stuff like this. And this is this should be scary to a lot of people. Uh, I know this concerns me because I personally like if, if I have to do business, I have to actually go to a bank, I want to see people there. I want to see physically people in the bank working in that bank. And it also gives me a sense of relief that there's actually a bank there. 
if we're doing everything online, that 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 you know, that's a little scary because hackers can can hack into to banks and and if it's online, you don't have anyone to go to to say, "Hey, what's going on?" You can't talk to a physical person. And a lot of times now when you call on the phone, it's it's automated as well. So it's hard to get a hold of someone to talk to and physically go to a bank. Now I'm going to show you this clip and this should really really scare you. This is in California. Here we go. Chinese bank shut down some of its systems after detecting suspicious activity. Action News Now reporter Lauren Cooper spoke with bank officials and customers about what happened. Maybe because you couldn't get through to anyone on the phone and maybe you couldn't make any transactions through an ATM, you would go to headquarters, but you can't because the doors are locked but you can still get in the door at other branches however there are still some restrictions they told me that i can't get my my um balance um and that um they don't know when the problem is going to be fixed beatrice meehan has been a tri-county's customer for three months they can't access their computers so they can't type in your information and look stuff up for you. I want to know um, if I can pay my bills, buy food. So I'm on a fixed income, so I, I need to know what I have going on in my account. It's her third day trying to find out her balance and failing. Well, I use a cane and try not to walk um, very far, and so I keep having to come back. Um, every day to see what, you know, if I can check my balance. Mm -hmm. What have been your emotions these past three days? You're getting hopeful that, you know, they're up again, but inconvenienced, kind of annoyed. Do you think you'll come back tomorrow? <laughs> no, because it's the weekend and I doubt they'll have, you know, the um, machines up yet. Others have had better luck. I was able to get all the cash I needed today. I was able to go in and talk with my banker and the tellers and find out what was going on. But it wasn't as easy as usual. It's uh, hectic only because they have to write everything down and they have to, you know, take a log manually and analog data and everything. And right now it's long lines, but other than that, it's still very friendly and everybody's being very courteous inside the bank. I would have taken my money out if I didn't feel safe. I did speak with another customer off camera who told me when they asked the bank teller what was going on, they told them that a hacker tried to steal money, but we haven't confirmed that with the bank. They did, however, tell us that there is no evidence to support that information was compromised. However, they are still investigating what happened and how this happened. Reporting in Chico, Lauren Cooper, Action News Now, coverage you can count on. So how would you feel if you were in that situation where you go to your bank or you call on the phone first and no one answers and then you go to your bank and the bank is closed and you, you realize that you can't use the ATM, you can't get your money out of the bank. And so this is what's really scary because we're looking at a potential to fall into a recession or a deep recession. If that is the case, will we see some banks start to shut down? And if they start shutting down, how are we going to get our money out? And so I'm always I'm always thinking of how I can prepare for things like this. And, and if you're in this situation, you might look at taking out a little bit of cash, just having a little cash in your house, uh, just because you could fall into a situation where things get shut down and you have no recourse. Now, another thing that concerns me is the push for tellerless tellers or automated banks. So you go in, there's no one, there's no one working in there. There's no physical person. It's all uh, AI. And the only people that you can talk to are on a video call. So what happens in a situation where, let's say, a bank shuts down, you go into the bank, you can't, you can't access the ATM, you go to the video teller, the video tellers aren't working, now what do you do? So this is, this is something that, that we really, really need to continue to pay attention to because we're seeing a change in the banking industry. And if the banking industry really starts suffering even more because of, of the interest rates and, and people not wanting to get loans... We're going to see more of this. We're going to see more banks closing. We're going to see this automation because what a bank will do before they close, what they'll probably move to is automation because a bank's biggest expense are their, their employees. That's where they're paying all their money because you have to think about a bank. A bank, they're, they're there to take money in and, and give out loans. That's their main focus. 
And so they're, they're, they don't have factories where they're making products and things like that. So their employees, that's where they're putting all their money into. That's where they're investing their money into to growing the bank. And they just need people to come in to the bank. And so if that's a situation, if it's the employees, that's where they're spending most of their money, then they can shift to these tellerless tellers and, and, and fully automate their system. And if they can do that, they'll be able to make more money. Or in a situation that we're in right now, where not, we don't have as many people that are out there getting loans, and now they can shift to automation and reduce their overhead. So, so they'll be able to still be around. And so we should really focus on the banks because if we see the banks start to go under, now we know we're in a real bad situation when it comes to our economy, even if you have politicians, because politicians are going to downplay this until it gets to a point where, yes, it's really bad. And then they'll start saying, OK, it's really bad. Now we're going to try to help you. But the banks, they're going to be the first ones to start really uh, laying people off. And we're seeing already in 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 the business industry, you're seeing companies start to lay people off. But the banks, we're going to start seeing that. If we start seeing that, that's when we really, really need to be concerned and, and, and pay attention and, and take those precautions, take money out, things like that, because we could be looking at a long, long, deep recession. And so I want to know what you guys think about the banking system and what's going on when it comes to automation and these banks shutting down. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.